Hi everyone, James Mansell here bringing you yet another episode of Iconic Brunettes. Yes. Oh my gosh, and I am so excited to bring you this week's Iconic Brunettes. Yes, now it's kind of a sad start because, well, we sadly lost this iconic brunette recently. So I decided we're going to pay homage with this episode. Yes, it's an emergency iconic brunettes. We are doing today the gorgeous Raquel Welch. Yes, Raquel Welch, sex symbol, sex goddess, actress extraordinaire, entrepreneur. All right, businesswoman extraordinaire, Raquel Welch. Now, I'm so excited to talk about her today because she's one of my favorite bombshells of the past, okay? And honestly, of recent years, too, because, like, she stayed beautiful, all right? Raquel Welch stays on pretty. But I'm going to use my own wig today. This is the Misty Premium Wig in the color brown. And it's perfect for that vintage 1960s Raquel Welch kind of vibe. Because in the 60s, she was more of, like, a true brunette. Whereas, like, as she started getting older, her hair started to get more tawny and auburn. So we are going to focus on young, gorgeous, ingenue Raquel Welch. Now, let's get started. I have the wig all pinned to the head. So I'm just going to start rolling it because it's a very specific kind of hairstyle Raquel Welch had. For a long period of time in her career, from the very start of it, when she was in the studios, she would have this big bouffant hairstyle that was very distinct and kind of associated with her as like the Raquel. It's almost like a mixture of like Bridget Bardot, only brunette. Raquel never bothered with blonde hair. Born Joe Raquel Tejada in Chicago. She is a proud half Latina. Yes, her father is from Bolivia. She started off as a dancer, like she has ballet training and also was like a very, very, very decorated pageant queen. Like she competed in pageants. I believe she was even voted, I believe she even won like Miss San Diego and it was a really big deal in the 1950s when she won it. However, this caught the attention of television executives which was the whole reason why she was doing these pageants was to get noticed because she was a single mom with two kids that she was just trying to support and she was doing it by any means necessary. So she was doing beauty pageants and she got discovered through that where she was eventually asked to do little TV spots. She was a weather girl. She was also like a presenter girl on this game show. She mentions in her like autobiography that like it was a really good opportunity for her because she got to rub elbows with really influential like comedians and old Hollywood elite. She was very, very blessed with the, way she, she, with the way that she looked because it definitely turned heads. People in Hollywood wanted a piece of her. They didn't know what her talent was or how talented she was. They just wanted this gorgeous girl in their movies. Like so many things almost came to fruition for her. Like she was almost a Bond girl. It was just, you know, a series of lucky coincidences that would lead her down the path of becoming soon to be Hollywood's premier sex kitten of the 1960s. Now she had been doing like small parts here and there where she was essentially just playing like an ingenue type or like, you know, just a pretty girl type. They didn't really figure out who Raquel Welch was at the studio she was at until they threw her into this movie that they just needed a girl for. It was called A Fantastic Voyage. Now, The Fantastic Voyage is a science fiction film. And Raquel Welch, as you'll notice from like her early filmography, they are a lot of what people would call schlock movies. Like, you know, throwaway science fiction type movies where not a lot of people took them seriously, but because she was in them, people went to go see them. Now this is a first taste of it. Like this is an often parodied kind of science fiction movies where like she plays a scientist who is shrunk down with a bunch of other scientists and they explore the human body. <laughs> and, like the often parodied scene is with Raquel Welch. The Simpsons did it great with Marge Simpson with the antibodies that start chewing off her clothes. <laughs> I love that one. I gotta admit they know where to stop. But yes, like often parodied a lot of these movies are, but they were the stepping stones for what would become the type that Raquel Welch would eventually fill. She was like the American's answer to a Bridget Bardell. Like we finally had our own for the 1960s. And honestly, when you look at photos of Raquel from that time, it's no wonder she was so fascinated over Like she was beautiful and no Hollywood star at that time looked like her. Like, and like when you come from like standards of like a Marilyn Monroe type or, you know, or like Elizabeth Taylor, like none of them look like Raquel Welch. Like just from like how fit she was and how gorgeous she looked 
and just how modern she was for the 60s. Like she was definitely carving out her own path and she was destined for stardom. The unfortunate thing would be is that stardom and acting, which she really, really wanted, was gonna be something she never would really quite achieve. One movie in particular is probably the one that really set her off and really put her on the map. The movie in particular would be One Million Years BC, where Raquel Welch plays a cave girl with no lines, but a fur bikini. And that fur bikini would be the fur bikini seen around the world. Like she recalls filming this in the freezing cold on an island, wearing nothing but this little fur bikini that she was mortified to wear, by the way, because she didn't really understand the idea that she was being used as a sex kitten until it was too late. <laughs> like She recalls saying like she was so uncomfortable wearing this because the second she'd like turn a corner, you could see everything. Like there was no way to like be modest with this thing on. Like it was showing off all of her body and she wasn't the most comfortable with this. And she did the movie because she was under contract and she had to, like you couldn't say no, you had to do it. So she filmed it and she thought, well, whatever, no one will think anything of it, it'll go away and I'll never have to think about, talk about it again. Cut to a promotional image of her in the fur bikini standing on the rocks, starts to make circulation. And when she lands in England at Heathrow Airport, she is mobbed by paparazzi because people want to know who this new it girl is on the scene. This gorgeous Raquel Welch, who is she? And this will be her stepping into the persona of Raquel Welch, the sex pot. An image that she would grapple with her whole career. The upside to this was that Raquel Welch was the it girl of the 60s. Like her picture was everywhere. People were fascinated with her. But the downside to this was, is that as she would say, next to her name, there was, was a little box with a question mark that said talent. And it used to eat her up, she said. And she always felt like she was never taken seriously and anything she really wanted to do, she was never given the chance to because they just didn't think she could pull it off. Like they did not see it for her. Like they said, this is your type and this is what you're going to be. So as the 1970s would approach, you know, she's done all these bikini girl movies like Fathom, Bedazzled, like lots of movies that require her to be in a bikini and look really good in it and have really big hair. <laughs> All right, now I'm going to talk about a very, very, very controversial film that Raquel Welch lobbied to be a part of. But I'll get to it after the break because I'm going to roll this up and then we'll start our styling. <laughs> be right back. All right, welcome back. I have it all curled. Yes, I put a nice curl pattern in it using a two inch roller because Raquel Welch's bouffant references like classic bombshell but with the 60s bouffant flair. So we're gonna try and do this. Like I said, it's sort of like the Bardot kind of look, but it was definitely a unique hairstyle to Raquel Welch. Like that's what I love about her. Like she was so stylish and just like such a modern woman of that time. Like no one in Hollywood looked like her. She used her sex pot status and did some really cool stuff with it. Like during wartime, she did a lot of USO work with like Bob Hope and everything. Like there's great clips of her online, like touring and entertaining the troops. Come the 1970s, she was really, really, really working towards changing up her image because she was getting bored of the role she was made to play. Like I said before, they were kind of like really lame, just pretty girl roles where she was just expected to wear a bikini and be very stunning. This wasn't the most fulfilling thing for a woman that wanted to do dramatic work and wanted to do serious acting. When she caught wind that Myra Breckenridge, the controversial novel by Gore Vidal, was in the works of being made into a film. It was optioned and bought by 20th Century Fox. And they wanted to make basically, as they described it, something with the humor of boys in the band. Like they wanted that kind of film. But what they got was Myra Breckenridge. <laughs> Mind you, this movie had an NC-17 rating and it came out along the same time as Beyond the Valley of the Dolls, another controversial film. Now, Beyond the Valley of the Dolls is by far a more entertaining film, but Myra Brackenridge truly, truly, truly is a marvel in itself. To give you a loose idea of what the plot is, because there's very little plot to this movie, Raquel Welch plays a trans woman who comes back to steal her lecherous uncle's fortune by posing as his late wife of his nephew. She comes back as Myra Brackenridge and she is plotting to take over this dramatic academy. This was one of Mae West's last films. She had never made a color movie before and it had been years since she had actually been in a film. 
like Mae West was driven out of film due to censorship. So she re-entered it in, this, in her 70s, in the 70s. And let's just say her and Raquel Welch didn't quite get along. Rumors on set were that both women were having their own like little things going on. According to Raquel, Mae West wanted no part in being in the same frame as Raquel Welch. Has been kind of written off to this day by her as just, you know, vain actress kind of things. Like they don't, she's a woman of a certain age and doesn't want to be seen with a very young, beautiful woman. And she says now that she's of that age, she could understand why she felt that way and why, you know, she didn't want to be seen in the same frame as Raquel Welch. Needless to say, Raquel was really, really excited about this role and it was something she could really sink her teeth into. Like she lobbied for it. She wanted to do this because she thought it's something different than just being a bikini girl. I have to say, as far as Raquel Welch movies go, it's one of her better ones. Like it's very, very, very out there. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Like the director, Michael Sarn, had an absolute vision that he just had to see through. <laughs> like it's it's not a good movie, but it will hold your gaze. It's one of those movies where people will probably, you know, <laughs> be doing extracurricular activities when they watch it. I can't imagine anyone watching it sober. Meyer Brackenridge is definitely a trip of a movie. But when this movie came out, it was panned. And it was kind of like the nail in the coffin for Raquel for a long time of doing anything different with her career. Like she went back to doing a lot of the same. After the bomb that was Myra Brackenridge, she went on to do other films and really kind of start doing like a little more experimental indie movies because the studio system was no more. It was soon abolished. So she was a free agent again, trying to make way in Hollywood and trying to make a new career for herself. And it wasn't until a movie called The Kansas City Bomber came to her house that she really got interested again. And this role is kind of incredible. It was capitalizing on the roller derby craze at that time in the 70s. Roller derby, for those of you who don't know, was a popular brand of sports where basically people were in a giant ring arena and mostly women played it. It was like a woman's a woman-led sport where they skated around and one of the big appeals is that these women would just get violent. Like there were girls called the jammers where it was just their job to knock all the girls down. Raquel Welch was really go hard or go home with it. Like she trained and trained and trained for it. She even broke her wrist. She showed off just how athletic she was and people really <laughs> took to it. Like they loved it. It was kind of campy, but also just like, they weren't expecting this out of Raquel Welch. Like for the most part, it was like a sports action movie with Raquel Welch. And it was one of the first times she had really forayed into a different style of acting that wasn't just, you know, being beautiful. Like her beauty was kind of secondary. It was more about just her being a tough woman that wanted to win. Now, 70s, she would do a lot of comedy roles, like starting off with like Mother Jugs and Speed, where she played, I believe, an ambulance driver, like an ambulance driver team action comedy, as well as The Three Musketeers, one of her first forays into actual comedy. She remarks that she actually snuck into a theater to watch herself and was really surprised to hear people laughing at her, but like laughing with her and at her jokes because she didn't find herself to be a very funny person. So the fact that she was able to do comedy and people enjoyed it was like one of those things that's like, you could tell really built in towards her confidence because when you look at her, when you read her story from her point of view, she always mentions how her biggest regret was not enjoying her career a lot more when she was younger and not enjoying having a better time with herself because she felt really down on herself and insecure a lot of the time. Which I guess, you know, you can understand because she was always being told, you are this, and that's all you're ever gonna be. And come the 1970s and 1980s, she was really starting to find herself. Like she was getting a little older and she was carving out her own path for herself because she had gotten to a very, very big tiff with a movie studio that essentially killed her career. Like she sued them and she won. She got a great settlement out of it but she was not gonna make another movie for a long time. Hollywood was angry at her. So she had to carve out a different path. She became an industrious woman. Like she had become a fitness empire. Like she followed in the steps of women like Jane Fonda. Fitness was a craze in the eighties. People were obsessed with it. You know, the hard body look. And Raquel Welch followed suit. She had basically come up with a brilliant idea of marketing hot yoga, where she had a book, she had a really successful tape that was going around like, People wanted to look like Raquel Welch in the 60s, 70s, and 80s girl. Like she looked amazing. Like she was the perfect spokesperson for something like fitness. However, she did find herself in controversy where she ended up getting sued by Bikram Yoga for plagiarism, which I believe they settled out of court. I don't believe he actually proved anything. And also when you dig into that story, oh, pack a lunch. So Raquel Welch 
was also venturing into other things beyond fitness. She's basically become really involved in beauty. Most importantly, wigs. Raquel Welch launched her wig line in the 80s. And let's just say like, this is an avenue she has conquered. Like Raquel Welch is the queen of wigs. When you think of like celebrity endorsed wig lines, Raquel Welch is that girl. Like Ava Gabor opened the doors, but Raquel Welch like kicked them open and took them off the hinges, okay? Like women were obsessed with her wigs and still are. Like she has really helped and nurtured along a lot of women who are suffering through hair loss or cancer and has really been like, you know, this champion of a woman that proudly wears wigs and really has, you know, taken away the stigma of wearing wigs in your everyday life. Like when you think of the following of Raquel Welch in the wig world, like she is a devoted brand. People stand by it. And I know we have like, <laughs> we've had our fun with her wigs in the past, but like when you look at all the women that really stand by her products, like there are certain things that her wigs offer that people really, really, really go for and really just works for them in their everyday life. Raquel Wells wasn't making a lot of feature films, but she was making her foray into television films, as well as debuting on Broadway. Like she had taken over for Lauren Bacall in Woman of the Year. Like Raquel Welch would go on to like do a lot of theater. She was in Victor Victoria, all sorts of stuff. She was one of those actresses that really took to like the lifetime movie market and even won an Emmy for her performance in one. I remember one in the eighties where she played a dying woman and like she completely de-glammed and it was, you know, a beautiful early lifetime movie where they took themselves a little more seriously where it wasn't like one of the usual lifetime howlers. It was one of their tear jerkers. She marks this as a high point in her career because it was one of the first times where she was allowed to be a dramatic actress and she didn't feel like people were taking a pot shot at her. All right, now I'm gonna tease the rest of this and I'll be right back. <laughs> now, can we take a moment? Can we please take a look at this wig? See, this is why I love my Misty wig. This is one wig. Yes, look at her. That's the front, that's the side back, honey. All that from one wig, double stack looking, honey. Okay. She had sort of like a Barbarella-esque kind of look to it. Like it was very, like I said, Bardot-ish, very like, ooh, I just woke up. My hair just naturally laid like this kind of looked. Freshly <laughs> hair is the term used for it often. With Raquel Welch's image, she had kind of hit a hurdle because when she was in the studio days, one of the big things she had had a problem with was that as soon as the late sixties rolled around and everyone started getting naked on film, they wanted her to follow suit. And she was adamant about, she was not going to show her body like that on camera. Even when she posed for Playboy, she was completely clothed. Like, it was such a statement too. She's like one of the few women that ever posed for the magazine where she never really took anything off. She was just in a bathing suit and her hands covered everything but that was the most you're going to get from her. And come the nineties and two thousands, she had started to really act again. She had just made a guest appearance on American Family as Aunt Dora, where she played, you know, the aunt of this Mexican-American family. And it was one of the first times she had really played a Latina on film. Like, again, she had never done that before. Her ethnicity was sort of hidden away. And she really kind of like was enjoying re-embracing this part of herself that she kind of felt like was swept away when she was in the studio system. Like they erased this from her. And it was kind of freeing to actually talk openly about this and portray a character that she knew. And it's like really, really sad when you think about it. Like whenever actresses of that time really embraced their ethnicity, chances are they were typecasted into something like Rita Moreno played a range of different roles that basically locked her in a box of ethnic. And come the 90s and 2000s, she was doing films like Legally Blonde and everything where she was just playing, you know, a comedic actress. And it was really great, like seeing her play evil moms. She had a really wonderful little resurgence in her career where she honestly would just pop up here and there. But for the most part, she was enjoying her life just being a businesswoman. We are getting somewhere like this is pretty much done. I just got to smooth it out some, but that's the general shape that we want. Like that 1960s Barbarella bombshell Raquel Welch hair. I just gotta smooth this side out and we are done. So I'm gonna get that done. I'll be right back with the final results. <laughs> Welcome back. This is the final result. Oh my God, girl. I love it. Now, I remember when I was first starting out drag, I was looking at Raquel Welch wigs because, like, 
I really wanted to have her hair that she had in the 60s. And I was just wondering, how in the world am I going to achieve this? And never being able to, and like looking at how expensive her wigs were, it's like, oh no, I can never afford a long wig from her. But now that I did, it's like, wow, like I had this in my repertoire and even now, like I never really do her hairstyle. Despite how much I really emulated it, I never really recreated it. So this is actually a really fun endeavor for me. Now, this was so much fun. If there's an iconic brunette you want me to do, please list them down below. But before I go, I have to take a moment, a Ven moment where I think everyone has tipped me on, Venmo. I would like to thank Mrs. Kasha Davis for the birthday tip. Thank you. Kyle, a girl named Kyle, Bobo by Kyle, who does earrings and necklaces for me. Thank you, honey. Cat Queer, Patrick, Sergio, as well as Sergio again. Thank you, honey. As well as I have some YouTube super thanks from Mrs. J. Harrington. Thank you. As well as M. Hello. It says in the comment their name is David Dum Dum. <laughs> Thank you, honey. Thank you both for the YouTube super thanks. Oh my God, this was so much fun. I'm so glad we got to pay homage to the legendary Raquel Welch. Now, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, bye. Now hit the outro. Click here and watch Iconic Brunettes, Donna Summer. Or so we try out Bomo Beauty by Bob the Drake Queen and Monet Exchange. Come on, click it. You know you want to. If you don't click it, I'll make you wear that fur bikini. So click it.